and I think we're live. Hello, everybody. Are we live? Um, live from Barcelona, by, live from Totnes. Could you do me a big favor? Let me know that you can see me. Let me know that you can hear me. My name is Jamie Keddy. I'm the founder of Lesson Stream. Um, we're a community of teachers with a passion for using story and storytelling in the classroom. I'm going to write a comment. I'm going to say hello. That should appear on YouTube. And when I see your comments, I will know that you can hear me and see me and I'll be able to relax and we'll be able to continue. And I'll know that I'm not talking to myself like an idiot. Uh, Nick's with us. Um, hello, David. How nice to see you there. Um, Nick's with us. He's just gone to get a glass of water. Um, I went to get one earlier. It's I was going to say it's only half full now. No, it is half full. It's now half empty. I can't decide. And hello, Sue. You can hear me. Great. Transform ELT. I'm going to assume that. Sarah, great to see you all. Nick, did you get your glass of water? I don't know if any of you took part in the last lesson stream live. Um, the last lesson stream live was on the 5th of October. Seems like so long ago now. It was with the same man. The same man you're looking at here, Nick Bilborough, seems like a long time ago, doesn't it, Nick? Oh, it does. Gosh, so much has happened, hasn't it, in that just over a month? So much has happened, yeah. And it's it's funny because I remember that we were we were chatting just before we went live and I was saying to you, how are you, Nick? And you said, oh, Jamie, I'm so tired. That was, that was you know, four and a half weeks ago, as we said before, how are you feeling now? Um, well, if I was tired then, I don't think I've got a word to describe how I feel now. Um, what's the extreme form of exhausted? Is there a more extreme adjective than exhausted? Absolutely. You'd have to use absolutely exhausted, I think. Add absolutely that. Absolutely exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Add an um, adverb. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to use a few swear words in there, I think. To really, <laughs> I, I won't do it. Could you maybe you could say it in Arabic? <laughs> um, I don't know. No, my Arabic's not that good, Jamie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hi, Sarah's here too. Um, so, so let me just introduce Nick. I'm sure, uh, but just in case you don't, Nick's a very good friend of mine. Nick is the 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 founder of the Hands Up Project, which is a charity which for almost almost 10 years now, nine and a half years, I think it is, right, Nick, has mm. been has been amplifying, amplifying the voices of school children in difficult parts of the world, especially Palestine and especially, especially Gaza. And um and so yesterday was the the yesterday was the seventh of November, on the seventh of October. Um, these absolutely off horrific attacks happened in Israel, um, and um, almost immediately there was a retaliation from the the Israeli forces into Gaza. And um, you were actually what what were you doing at that time, Nick? You said you were actually involved online via Zoom with some kids in Z in Gaza on that very day. What what was it? Oh, well, in the yeah, well, I mean, we just started. We decided not to do a competition this year, um, but instead we were going to, this is the playwriting competition and play performing competition. Instead of doing it as a competition, we were going to just link kids up in Palestine with kids in another place and help them to create a play themselves over a long period of time, support them in creating a play and, and then eventually performing it. And that evening, um, we had, you know, suddenly we thought, are we going to actually be able to do this? But we had one boy from Palestine who turned up and then a few girls from Argentina. So we couldn't really do anything in terms of drama, or, but, and we could hear the bombs going off in the background. And we had lovely boy called Moad, who's 14 years old. He's a brilliant young man great writer, really fun to be with. I just traveled with him from Gaza to Jerusalem in, in July. And he was just such good company, really intelligent and witty and 
anyway, yeah. That was, well, gonna, that was more odd. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about the contact that you've with some of the teachers and some of the students, the children and guys that you've managed to maintain in a little yeah. while. But Nick had a special request as a way to start this session off. Because when we did uh, a lesson stream live four weeks ago, we ran out of time. And Nick had wanted to show us a clip of a, of a Zoom link up with a classroom in, in Gaza. That I'd, When was this from, Nick? Was it a few years ago, a couple of years ago? It's quite a few years ago. It's something like, I think it would have been 2017. And yeah. it involves a situation puzzle, doesn't it? Yeah. And in fact, this is what I sent out in my um, my emailing. What's the situation? Give us the situation. Okay. Well, this was with a particular class that loved doing those kind of puzzle stories. So a story that had a, a particular kind of like a riddle kind of thing. And they had to solve the riddle. Actually, they, they often told me riddles. They came to the class and had sessions, had uh, had riddles in mind, and they told them to me, and I had to try and solve them. So this was a chance for me to get my revenge. And this was actually my nephew who told me this riddle um, when he was about, he would have been about 12, 11 or 12 when he told me this. So here's the riddle. So there's a man and he's he's a prisoner he hasn't done anything wrong at all but he's put inside a steel box really strong steel um there are no windows at all no doors no way of getting out of the box and all there is is a wooden table inside the box he's got enough air to last him i don't know four hours or something so he's got to get out of the box and get back to his family. How's he going to do it? Well, I've been thinking about this for a number of weeks. And I was <laughs> tempted to Google it, but I haven't done that. So we're going to show you a little clip of Nick working through Zoom um, with this group of uh, a classroom in Gaza. Where, where is the classroom? Where was the classroom? So this worked? is a class in Gaza City in, in a school called Mamonia Prep Girls School. So it's an UNRWA school, that's United Nations school for the refugee population of Gaza. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if I should say this before or after, but I think this is just so typical of the kind of energy, I'm going to say it before anyway, <laughs> wait for your answer. But it's, it's there's so much positive energy energy in the room the girls are really trying to solve the problem and really animated and there must have been about 25 30 girls in the room and they're all sort of anyway watch it and you'll see yeah okay let's, let's play this clip then and let's see what it's all about <laughs> okay here we are is the box uh, is the man inside the box yes the man is inside the box. Story in the book. In the book. Not the box. Is the plural of book? No. So, no, no. <laughs> oh, Nick, it's really difficult. <laughs> but you should give us uh, some time to know. <laughs> okay. You can ask me a question. Ask me a question uh, if you want. Can I ask you some question? Yeah. How can he enter in the box? He. There are no doors and uh, yes, and because windows. they made they made the box. They first they put a metal thing on the floor. They made him stand on it, and then they built the box around him. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And why they put the table box, uh, the table in the box, in the metal box? We want the clues, Nick. Uh, clues, 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 please. Okay, so the table is important. He he needs to use the table. The table is important. He does something with the table. He does something with the table. 
Maybe, maybe he, he made from this wood a tree. He what? He made from the wood a tree. How? And <laughs> yes. How do you make a tree? <laughs> maybe he, he made fire. He made fire. Fire, maybe. But he didn't have any. He didn't have any matches. Maybe. He didn't have a lighter. Uh, we all agree that we can't answer this. No, we want to win. No. <laughs> it's funny because you showed us this photograph um last time you were here and so this is the 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 photograph version of a similar situation what we just said was the the corroboration of the energy in the room by the video yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly Great. yeah yeah it was, it was, it was i was just thinking like if that was a sort of if I was being assessed for a lesson, it would probably be probably somebody would say, oh, a bit chaotic or something. <laughs> <laughs> probably get a fail for it um, if I was doing a training course. But I don't know. I just love that energy that that's in the room. And I love the fact that they say, you know, the teacher says we all agree we can't solve it. And the girls are going, no, 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 we want to do it. We want to carry on. <laughs> now, Nick is uh, shameless, and this is his decision. He's not going to tell the answer to the man in the box until the end of this session to make sure, apparently, that you all stay. Um, <laughs> let's see if it works, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we ask You've always to see if they want to put a suggestion for the answer in the comments or if anyone well, thinks they know the answer put it yeah. into the yeah but you've always said this consistently you've always said that this is one of the, the sort of characteristics of working with palestinian kids that you yeah. that you love they're all so enthusiastic and that's why it came to be known as the, the hands up project in the first exactly. place which i i didn't know that until last time yeah 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 so much energy and it's almost like they're sometimes they're bursting through the screen you can almost feel them bursting through the screen and getting into your living room you know it's <laughs> um yeah so what have you been up to then over the last few weeks since that night you described wow um i mean my job has just completely changed completely different job i'm doing now um i'm trying I, I used to be i mean i would normally be doing some link ups training new people to do link ups um arranging performances of remote plays that kind of thing what i'm doing now is supporting all of the hundreds of kids that we work with and the teachers that we work with we're getting messages daily messages um from from kids and teachers telling us about their situation and um so that's one thing i'm doing and we do a podcast every day now of 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 where we um share things that have come from palestine from gaza um also from the west bank as well but um so we do that every day and we do regular updates on our website. But the other thing I'm trying to do is just get out there as much as possible, talk to the media, get into schools and universities and give talks about our work. Because I think that's something that's kind of missing from the mainstream media. We hear about the numbers of people who've been killed, but we don't see the faces of of the kids and we don't i don't think the average person just kind of puts two and two together and realizes that there are just masses of kids there and they're just normal kids like anywhere else in the world so that's what i'm trying to do i think you've been and the other volunteers 
you've all been doing a, a really good job at, at doing that. I mean, I follow you on Facebook and I follow the Hands Up Project YouTube channel. I'll put the links to the, the Facebook. The, the, the podcasts that you mentioned, they all go out on your YouTube channel, right? Yeah, and then we share them on our website as well because mm -hmm. Facebook has become a bit of a mess, I feel, like during this. There's so much stuff out there and things get lost. So we also put them all on our website so that if you go to our website every day, you'll see the new updates that are coming. Yeah. That's project.org. Yeah, so you've been doing a very good job in this. It's, it's just so important, isn't it, that uh, – especially and think that so much of what's happening is being politicized yeah and to just get the you know the the, the faces and the the voices and the stories and the individuals through is is, is so important and you've been you've been lots of uh, did you all see nick on al jazeera <laughs> would you like me to show you nick on al jazeera how do you feel about that nick yeah great what what was the context there? How did that happen? Um, I can't remember who. I think they got in touch with me because it was um, a journalist who'd actually interviewed our um, coordinator in Gaza in the last serious conflict that happened in 2021. Um, and she just got in touch with me and asked me if I'd like to do a quick interview. Um ah. But it's it's really nice because it shows a play. It shows a part of a play that was made by the kids. Um, and it, yeah, and it's a play that you're very familiar at with, from sorry, very fond of rather because yeah. it kind of encapsulates this intercultural remote theater that you've yeah. that Gaza has given the world in your words. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, these kids who who performed in the play, um, they went to Belfast. And they re-performed. So this is two girls from the Czech Republic and three girls from Gaza. They made an online play together without having met face to face. And then they went to Belfast and re-performed it in a school in Belfast. And there are all these kids in Belfast who just, you know, keep messaging us and asking about where the girls are and what they're doing now. So they made a really strong connection in Belfast. And it was funny because Rahaf, um, she was only there for a week. Um, and by the end of the week, she developed a Belfast accent. <laughs> it was really, and, and she, it was funny because she, she seemed to be able to understand people better than I could. After I find it quite hard to understand the Belfast accent. Do you find it hard, Jamie? Well, if it's, uh, maybe not as difficult as you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's not the easiest. It, yeah, because I, I I, suppose, I don't know, it's pretty different from your accent as well, isn't it? I mean, it's not a, but I suppose it's closer to your accent than it is to mine, perhaps. Let's so. have a look at this this clip then, because this is, yeah. what's, this is it's a little snippet of, you're going to meet these girls that Nick's talking about, um, a little snippet of a, of a video called Welcome to Earth. And it's a really nice little piece that Al, Je Al Jazeera have decided to use. So here, here's, and this is serious Nick, isn't it? Very serious yeah. Nick with the glasses. Senior kids never. Oops. Senior kids never give up and we will achieve our dream. These messages of hope from three pupils from Gaza, Yara, Rafah and Malak were filmed in Belfast last year. Let's go. And looking at different places. They were involved in an education theatre project that connects hundreds of children with teachers from around the world. That was before the war started. The Ministry of Health is receiving calls about those missing. This number has reached 2,660, including 1,270 children under the rubble. Now, contact has been lost with Yara and all of their homes have been destroyed. A lot of people, we just don't know where they are. UNRWA staff have been killed. Ministry of Education staff have been killed. Uh, the Islamic University, which is one of the places which trains, main place which trains teachers in, in Gaza, has been bombed. It's a disaster. I really don't really have any words for describing the 
the impact this is going to have. The UN says nearly. Yeah, which was one of the you know one of the things that we're following you in um, in lesson stream. One of the questions that keeps getting asked is, "Have you been in touch with the the kids and the teachers?" And that was really the the difficult answer is you just haven't in many many cases have you yeah yeah there's mo most people we just don't know where they are we don't know where they are at all yeah and there's a uh, very limited uh, internet um yeah. isn't yeah. there so it could be just that people don't have um a connection um but it could be for other reasons too of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Nick, there's a, there's a, it's a shame because, um, hands up project, um, overseen by Nick has just published or has just had a second run print run of a book, um, which I've ordered, but didn't get to me in time. I was hoping to have one in my hand. Mm but it should probably get to me tomorrow morning. <laughs> but but it all starts. We want, we want to, Nick's going to tell us, talk us through a bit of a story here from which a lot of voices of guys and kids are going to come. And it all starts with quite a special, quite a special picture, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So this was, it was one, I don't think it was my first ever trip to Gaza, but I think it was probably my second. And I was visiting... Actually, I was visiting that school that you saw in the clip earlier, Mamonia Prep Girls School. And as I was leaving the class, they put on lots of shows for me, plays and um, things like that. And as I was leaving, a girl called Layla, who was about 13 at that time, she came up to me and she showed me this picture and she said, um, I painted this and I'd love you to have it. I want you to take it back to England with you. And I I said, I can't, Layla. I can't take that back. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful painting. And you want to keep it and show it to your grandchildren. And she said, no, no, I want you to take it. I want you to take it back and put it on your wall. So by a chance, I actually had a suitcase that was big enough because I'd taken lots of books into Gaza. So I had a suitcase that was big enough and I took it in my suitcase and took it back. And it's been on my wall ever since that moment. And then we decided um, early this year, sometimes we run competitions for Palestinian kids and we decided to um, launch a competition and we asked the children in Palestine to create a poem that was inspired by this painting. So we set, we gave them the picture of the painting and said, can you write a 50 word poem? It needs to be maximum 50 words. And um, we also asked them to, not to write it on a computer, but to handwrite it and also to decorate it. So to draw whatever they wanted around it or decorate it in any way they wanted to and we were overwhelmed by the numbers of poems i mean it wasn't actually just for kids in palestine it was for kids anywhere i think we just said they had to be under 16. most of them were from palestine and most of them all the palestinian ones were from gaza actually um, but we also had entries from india argentina and spain um, and the result is this book. So we've got this book here and you can see all the poems in there. And it's really lovely. I just think it's so nice to have people's own writing. You know, it's something... I mean, look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Really beautiful. Beautifully. I love handwriting. It kind of shows a bit. It shows something about somebody, doesn't it? The, the way that you write. Um, 
So there it is. Yeah, that's a book. And and it's selling really well, actually. Lots of people. And there's loads of interesting things that are happening around it. So there's going to be an exhibition in Bristol um, of people are going to print off the, the poems and have them on the walls. And um, I don't know, there's been lots of spin-offs around it. There was uh, there's a school in Italy where they've, They've done some of the poems. Um, they've kind of performed the poems physically with a, with movements. This is Italian kids learning English. They've also been translated. Some of them have been translated into different languages. Um, and yeah, so I can see there's lots of questions in the comments. <laughs> answer them, Jamie. Or yeah, <laughs> um, Nicole's asked you, where are you at the moment? So I'm in Totnes in Devon, in the southwest of England. And somebody was also asking about the podcast. Well, the podcast. That's Dan, can, that's right. Yeah, Dan. So you can you can hear it all. You can hear the podcast on our website. If you just go onto our website, you'll see updates from Gaza and all of the podcasts are there and on our YouTube channel as well. And Slavenka has asked about the exhibition. I'm not sure when it will be. We haven't got a definite date, but we're trying to do these things as soon as possible. And I think there will also be one in Oxford. And Gillian said she must get this book, and uh, it's a uh, link below. Yeah. This absolutely is a, a hard sell. And we, <laughs> well, um, we asked people around the world to be judges for the competition, and one of the judges was Alice Oswald, who's the – poet in residence at Cambridge University and um sorry not Ox not Cambridge Oxford University professor of poetry at Oxford University and she wrote a really lovely introduction to it and one of the things that I really love about this book is it's not nobody's kind of gone with their red pen and corrected things and because you can't really do that with poetry can you that would be um so we've got sort of mistakes in there i mean even the title it's not moon tell me the truth it's moon tell me truth and i kind of like that it's a lovely thing that happens almost accidental and the imagery that so-called mistakes can create yeah it is it is you're absolutely right um and there's quite a and, and i've i've read this book cover to cover not despite not having it i've read the, the the digital version cover to cover yeah and i mean the poems are so enjoyable yeah i mean they're, they there's a lot of them are quite sad yeah um they have there's some recurring themes of course yeah, um, because Gaza is a very closed place, closed closed space. A lot of the kids have never left, but there, there's also so much kind of hope and joy, and they're they're just pleasurable to read, aren't they? And I've, I've yeah. actually got a few of them here. Yeah, um, you mentioned um, Alice Oswald. Do you do you know which poem that she she's got a favorite one? She in the in the introduction there's one that she refers to yeah well she, she in particular that poem i don't know i'm not actually sure where that poem is in the book it's right here oh you've got it oh great yeah and it and mm. it's it i like it so much more when you see it in context do you mm. want to read that you've got your glasses on i don't i can't i'm gonna have to how can i make the screen bigger um, <laughs> read it go from to the bottom Go to the bottom left, and uh, I can read it. I can read it. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, you read it, Jane. Okay. I, I'm, I, I can't quite. Yeah. She talks about my darling, um, and we don't. I don't know if we know if her darling is her mother or maybe her mother's words. Maybe she's her mother's darling. But my darling's face is sad. The moon's face in our homeland is sad. Sad you are, my city. You the spring of tears and a long sad history. You are the painting of pain and expressions of pain. Your eyes has the green color of olives and the blue color of sea. 
while the night falls over the face of life. Darling, wipe out that sadness and weave the dress of impossible from the tears. And it's that last line, isn't it, that uh, mm. Alice is attracted to? Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's quite a powerful image, isn't it? Wipe out that sadness and weave the dress of impossible <laughs> from the tears. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've picked out a few. Sorry. Mm. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it, it is that thing that you were mentioning, isn't it, about how because, because it's not the first language. I mean, okay, so we might say all oh, that should be the dress of impossibility, but the dress of impossible, it just kind of works, doesn't it, somehow? The dress of impossible. It's, I can't explain what it is, but there's something interesting about that i think absolutely yeah it's yeah. really nice hello nelly nice to see you here and oh hello joe. Joe. Yeah. hello joe, joe. Too. hello joe <laughs> i met joe There's in slovenia Nelly. i think the first time yeah yeah i mean <laughs> We do know, Jamie, I mean, this is this is kind of, well, it's tragic, really, but we don't know these kids. We don't know which ones of the kids are still alive. Um, we know that two of them have been killed. Um, and one one girl has been killed with a whole family in an airstrike and that's really tragic and that poem that she wrote i don't know i find it i think it's got a, such a can i read that one out jamie this is fatima isn't it yeah yeah shall i shall i display it as well because i've got it yeah the... i can read it from i've got it in the book here so i read it from there but... okay do you, you read it we don't need to display it. i can right. show it afterwards okay well, I'll just show it like that's the decoration that she did. It's on, it's on, it's not easy to see because it's just kind of a photograph of a crumpled piece of play, paper. But Fatima was nine years old, Fatima Saidem. She was nine years old and she wrote this and it goes like this Eyes are for looking and seeing sun, tongues are for greeting and saying fun. Legs are for walking slowly and also run. Hands are for shaking with friends, not for shooting gun. So how do we... That's, that's it, that's just about says everything we need to know really about being a human doesn't that yeah that must be really hard so when we gave yeah. out when we went when i was in gaza in july we went to the Islamic University and we had a conference there it's the first time the hands up project has had a face-to-face -face conference so all the teachers involved in the project came along and we had a variety of different workshops and presentations and then um, after that we went to the gardens the Islamic University had a beautiful garden outside and we, it was a lovely day, it was July, it was hot, and we were under the trees, and we, all the kids who had a poem in the book, um, they, we invited them, and they, they got their own copy of the book, and that was really nice. Um, yeah. Wow. But that's no longer there now. That, that university has also been bombed, and that's like, you know, that's the, that's a place where, 
teachers are trained. Most of the ELT teachers in in Gaza are trained there. And it's, you know, it's a source, it's a place of learning. And, and that's, that's wrong. Um, yeah. I'm getting a lot of comments about that. Yeah. 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 It is very powerful. Yeah. It's a very important message. Let me just show, just let me just show people the, the, the poem as well, because, um, um, hang on one second. I'll put it on the screen because it is. It's also um, sixteen. Let me just get this. Yeah. Heartbreaking. There's um, I've got this one that I like. Um. It's, um, I've put a few together here. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's, there's so many good ones. Mm. Yeah, I like this one. Um, moonlight at night appears every day, but when sun shines, moon goes away. A girl singing, playing with butterflies, whispering to a friendly moon, hoping of joy, of peace to come soon. Mm. That's, I cha and there's there's this one too. I, this one really gets me. It's there's a there's a middle line, and it's it's such an unexpected middle line that makes me change so much. It's brown, white, dark, bright. I don't care. I don't dare. Blonde or not, dad me sing a good one. <laughs> no life with no she. No life with no he. He completes she. He completes she. We all need peace. I'm a human peace. Hmm. Two homophones yeah. at the end. <laughs> I'm a human peace. Yeah. That's <laughs> wow. What a yeah. That's stunning. Yeah, yeah. There's so many more. And there's another there's another poem as well, but it's even from um Obada, isn't there a little um, fourteen-year-old Obada? He his poem there, but I don't know if it's so poignant. It's maybe I don't know. Do you want to see it? The poem? Yeah, I think we have to, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Well, we also we have to say Obada also has also been killed, and I yeah. I remember Obada really well because he was the only boy. Um, I think he was the only boy who has a poem in the book certainly the only boy in gaza and he was i've got a picture of him um and he's he was kind of really shy and humble and just like a lot of people are aren't they sometimes people who are very thoughtful um you know he wasn't kind of big showy kind of person he was just quite quiet and shy and i just remember him i'll always remember how he received his book shall i read this one out jamie yeah we can put it on the screen as well here because i've yeah i always dream of a life clear as the serenity of the sky and a heart beating with love of optimism why our smiles do not bloom like the flowers let us fly freely as those butterflies, satisfied, colourful and flapping sky high, away from worries, anxieties and sorrows. Yeah, and it's, I suppose it's kind of unusual, isn't it, to draw a heart, lots of young people, Lots of old people draw hearts on things, but Obad has actually drawn a real heart on his. You would have gone on to be a doctor, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. So. By the book. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's so there's it's just got so much beauty and joy and and sadness, of course. Mm. But um it, it's it's a you know, when you're the times of my life when I've worked with Palestinians, which is just Met Palestinian kids, they are just so joyful, aren't they? They're just so much yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, Jamie, I think it's quite a good thing to do in a class as well, you know, just to have something as a as a source of inspiration, like a painting. Oh, well, there we are. You got a comment just saying exactly <laughs> the same thing. That's good timing. Um yeah. Um, and, and I think it's also nice to limit the words to make it short. You know, it's only 50 words, maximum 50 words, because that makes you work in a different way, doesn't it? If you've got lots of words, you might, there might be a tendency to kind of waffle a little bit, but yeah. Lovely to see. Hello, hello, Gillian, and hello, Anna, as well. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, do you want to... It's funny because, let's see, can you show us the picture again? Because just yeah. just um, about 10 minutes before going live, um, Nick got in touch with Layla, the artist, mm. Um and she said she might have tried to be with us today, um, but I, I think she probably would have said hello, wouldn't she? Yeah. Um, but she did send Nick a little audio on Facebook, and I've managed to, I've managed to download it. So she's recorded a very special message, a two-minute yeah. message, um, to tell us um, how things are, what it's like. She's in. Where is she right now, Nick in Gaza? Where well, she was. She's from Gaza City. She's actually from that same school that we saw in the video clip. Ah, so she was in the classroom. I'm not sure she was in that group. It might have been a different, a different group. I'm not sure if she was in that one. I think she might be a bit younger than those girls, but um, she has had to move lots of times. Um, she's now in Rafa, in the right on the border with Egypt in the south southern part of Gaza. But she's studying um, to be um, a kind of medical laboratory. Um, I think it's like a, a kind of lab, lab technician. She was studying that at at university at the Islamic University. No, anyway, so yeah. let's. Mm. We've got a little audio message, and we can play it. Um, this is Layla, and this is what she said just about one hour ago. She sent this, didn't she, Nick? Yeah. Maybe a little bit more. Here she is. Yeah. I'm Layla Muhammad Al Haj Abid, a 19 years old Palestinian girl living in Gaza. I'm a lab medical sciences student at the Islamic University of Gaza, which has been destroyed. And this year was supposed to be my second year, but everything stopped during this war in Gaza. All of you have seen the situation here. I've lost many friends and colleagues, teachers and relatives. We have lived horrible days till now. We evacuated many times from my house to other houses, from schools to institutions, to streets, hospitals, and it ended up here, here in Rafah city, which is a city in the south of the Gaza Strip. We left a lot of things at home. We only took our documents and important papers like ID cards and we took some money. We here suffered from water shortage and the medicine leak, food leak, bread, no gas, no electric. The only source of, source of energy is the solar panels and it's not provided for all of us in Gaza. We are not feeling comfortable at all. Days and nights are the same, scary and horrible and dark and 
we used to see the sky of Gaza blue, but now everything is black and white. Most of my family houses are destroyed. People are living in schools and in streets, hospitals, but nowhere is safe. We see marches everywhere in the world, and that what is keeping us stronger. During these massacres here in Gaza, but we still believe that we will be back home and all of this will end. We will be back to our lives as they were and everything will end. We are, we are just sure that everything will end. And thanks for everyone is supporting Palestine out there. It's actually the first time I, I was able to listen to that. And it's the details, isn't it? You hadn't even thought about the the fact the sky, the blue sky is no longer. Just, it just must be absolute hell. Yeah. And it's, I mean, in a way, she's, Layla's one of the lucky ones because she's got solar panels on her building. So most places won't have that, they won't have any power. Um, you know, a lot of people are really suffering from lack of water, lack of food. Um, so it's a, it's a really horrific, horrific situation right now. Desperate, desperate times. Yeah. Yeah. She was 14 when she did the painting and now she's about 19. She's, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's, yeah. Which, is, which is something we spoke about last time that, you know, the hands up project has been going for 10 years and there are kids that have grown up. Mm. They've with the hands up project through the entire school life. There are guys and kids who've, and it's, you've got this, you've mentioned this last time, but it's fascinating. You've got this feature in the website. Tell us about it. <clears throat> oh, you mean the where are they now thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got this page. Um, so we've got in touch with some of the people who you mentioned who, who've, who've kind of grown up with us and just found out what they're doing now. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last one, but there's one, there's a girl called Zainab and she acted in one of the first remote theater performances. It was actually at Ayatefel. It was the Ayatefel conference in Glasgow and they performed a play from Gaza to all the audience at Ayatefel. Well, not all the audience, but I think there were about 150 people there in the audience. And they performed this traditional Palestinian story called Jubena, which is kind of like a Cinderella story. And then there's a moment in the story when it's classic remote theatre. You know, she, the prince comes along and says, um, will you marry me? And she goes right up to the webcam and she says, what do you think? She says to the audience, what do you think? Should I marry him? And I was saying, no, don't marry him. Because he's a bit of a, he's only interested in her when he finds out she's beautiful. He, he wasn't interested in her at all um, when he didn't realize how beautiful she was. Um, but she did, she took the advice of the audience. But the nice thing about her is Zainab, I mean, she, we, we found out what she's doing now and she's actually just started studying engineering again at the Islamic University. So she didn't marry, she didn't get married. She didn't, um, she pursued her dreams and she, she became, uh, she's studying now, well, she was and, um, studying uh, engineering. <laughs> Is that my WhatsApp that's making that noise? I keep meaning to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll, I'll just turn that off, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was interesting because, you know, I keep saying this a lot, but it is something I think is worth repeating. But 
we're about building confidence in kids. We're about giving them opportunities to connect and building their self-esteem and making helping them to feel that they're not isolated from the rest of the world. We're we're about connecting young people. And like it was quite nice with Layla. I got really excited when I told her I got in touch with her. I hadn't been in touch with her for years. Her picture had been on my wall. And then I through her teacher, Rana, I found her contact on Facebook and I told her that all these people had written poems about her painting. And she was like really <laughs> excited to hear that. Um and that was lovely. Um so she actually came to a couple of events when we first launched the book. We did a, a few readings of it and she came online, uh, an online reading of the poems. And she came and she read one of the her favorite poems as well at that. And that was really nice. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's what we're all about. And that's that's I suppose that's what I feel most proud about, about the Hands Up Project, that we've helped kids to feel connected to the world and built their confidence and and it's so you know tragic to contrast that with what what's happening now when you've got the situation where kids are just feeling like the whole world's against against them and i do want to say this as well i mean it isn't interesting what layla said there we're getting that from so many people they see marches they see people supporting them they see marches around the world um calling for a ceasefire and they feel that gives people a bit of hope and that so that's one of the things i'm doing we're sharing images of people calling for a ceasefire and and demonstrating and yeah Yeah, I can't just, it's beyond belief that there's not a universal call for a ceasefire. It's absolutely, yeah. it makes me sick. Yeah, yeah, me too. It, it just makes no sense at all. And no. there's a call, for, you know, the Israeli hostages, plenty of them. Yeah. Want exactly the same thing. It's absolutely mad. Yeah madness we're going to be looking back at this and it's going to be another yet another one of those things that the west has failed to add, add yeah. to the huge list yeah listen um i'm wondering if anybody's got any questions for nick um i've got one for him this guy in the box <laughs> Here's Chris has got a question. Hello, Chris. I don't know if we said this. How do you see this playing out for the kids and young adults? She wants to return to her former life and continue studying. Yeah. Um, I, do, I, I really don't know. I mean, we've never experienced anything like this before. I mean. Could, could you just tell us a, one little thing, Nick? You mentioned... Um, last time because a lot of the the, the gazans in the north you you showed us the picture last time of one of the biggest um refugee camps i think one of the biggest refugee camps in the world yes it is jabalia jabalia Jab yeah jabalia which is no longer inhabited um it is inhabited have people stayed on haven't they yeah 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 and um, it was, I mean, one of the, somebody asked me later, they said that they'd shown you this refugee camp, but it looked like a city. Mm. In fact, if I, let me see if I can just show it to you. And I, this kind of, it, it's a very important sort of part of what the Gazan mentality is, isn't it? Because a lot of them have been there in that refugee camp since 1967, is that? Well, even before that, because... Um, you know, lots of, well, obviously they haven't, but their parents have because, so in 1948, um, when 
the 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 state of Israel Israel was created, there were masses of Palestinian refugees, and some went to Lebanon, some went to Jordan, some went to Syria, and some stayed in Palestine now, what is now Palestine in the West Bank, and in in Gaza. So I think there is something like nine refugee camps in Gaza. Um, and Jabalia is the biggest of those. The oldest one is a refugee camp called Beach Refugee Camp. I think that's the oldest one in Gaza. Um, I'm not sure how, and, so, and some of them would have been established in 67 as well. But, yeah. And it is this, this is sort of, from what I've, and learn from speaking to you and from reading there's this this idea of a, an identity that's maintained of the refugee and that's why they still refer to it even though it looks like a, a city they want it to be a reminder that they are refugees that they've been mm. they were relocated they were forced yeah through war into that part of the into yeah. into Gaza, and so we've got we've got families now which or which identify as refugees now being refugees again, and it, it's mm. it's it's a it's just what the, we've been going through is just awful. Listen, we're going to have to we should we play this last clip and we're going to find out the answer to the man in the box. Yeah, well, we could do it like that. Or I could tell you the answer, which would which, which well, you think is better? I would personally like to see the clip. Well, okay. what, what do you think, everybody? Would you, because um, <laughs> all yes. I know, I don't know the answer, but I do suspect that it's a bit of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I do suspect there's going to be a lot of eye rolling, like, oh, yeah. God. And, yeah. I, and I'd, so I would like to know how, how the girls deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that one. yeah. Am I right in thinking of that, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised that they actually wanted anything to do with me after, <laughs> after this. <laughs> <laughs> so um we'll maybe just finish that question at the very end. Let's just play this clip. And uh this is this is <laughs> here's the answer. I'll tell you, it's I said it's about playing with words. It's about playing with words. Words have two meanings. Okay, so the man was feeling really frustrated. He's inside a box. He can't escape. There's just a table. So he got his, his hand like that, and he hit it really hard on the table like that on the table he hit his hand on the table and after that his hand was really sore you know what that means his hand was really sore ah sore his hand was sore. Okay. It hurt him a lot. Okay. His hand was really sore. So he took the saw <laughs> You know what that is, a saw? But you said that he don't have anything. Yes. Okay. And in a word, not a word, eh? Sore, it means sore, sore, yeah, yeah. Two meanings of sore. So his hand was very sore. So he took the saw and he sawed the table. Cut the table, yeah. With the saw, okay? He cut the table with the saw into two equal halves. Two equal halves. Yeah? Now... What do two halves make? If you have two halves, what do they make? If you have, 
Who's good at mathematics? If you have half and half and you add them together, what do you get? We have one. You have one or you have a whole. Yeah. Oh, so he get, oh. So two halves make a whole. Okay. So <laughs> there was a hole in the box. Okay. So he got out of the box through the hole. But this okay. is a joke. This is not wait. a joke. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I live 1,000 years. I won't answer this. Yes. <laughs> when he got out of the box, he started in the desert. He was still in the desert. Okay. He shouted, help, help. Help! He shouted and shouted and shouted. And his voice became horse. horse. And he found the horse <laughs> and sit on the horse and get from the desert. You know what that means when your voice is hoarse? Yeah. You can't, you shout too much. Yeah. Sometimes when you're teaching, you be, your voice becomes hoarse. So then, he, like you said, Diana, he got on the horse and he rode back to his house. That's the story. Tell us. I'm really sorry. I have to apologize on behalf of my guests and his <laughs> <laughs> making us wait till the end for that answer <laughs> you, a mutiny on your hands there from those from those girls yeah <laughs> what do you think of that Amy <laughs> well I'm Scottish horse and horse are not homophones nor are sore and saw are they not no, nor are they from for Palestinians, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, give me your sore and sore. Saw. Saw. Yeah. Sore. Oh, really? Yeah, erotic speakers there. Oh. Yeah. But I thought I thought it was he was thinking outside the box, and that that's what I thought he was. He just sat at the table and decided to think outside the box. That's what I thought. I was sure that was going to be the answer, but I didn't tell it because I didn't want to ruin it. And yeah. somebody said they already knew the answer; they didn't want to spoil it. Yeah. But um, I went, was that who was it that said it? Somebody said they already knew this. I'm wondering they, if that they, knew, they knew it from their childhood. I think. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah not for northerners this is sue absolutely i agree <laughs> or northern -er 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 -ers. <laughs> yeah yes i don't know if you well, want to answer that question nick it's a bit contentious perhaps it, uh, what's <laughs> maybe the not can elt orgs um organizations um do more than marches and talking can anything well, I mean, there's a lot of political debate going on and I'm not, I'm trying to get out of, I don't want to get involved in political debate. And I also don't think that that is my strength and, and it's not something I, I, I want to do really. Um, on the other hand, I think we have all of this body of beautiful work that has been created by kids so i think that's what we can do we can share these plays we can um and i think that's a powerful thing to do to just i mean that's why i'm trying to push things like like the play welcome to earth did we show that last time jamie welcome to earth i think we did didn't we we did yes we did yeah, that was that was the play that there was an excerpt shown in the Al Jazeera clip. And if you exactly. actually, it's one of the three plays that I've included in a blog post. Yeah, which you can click underneath. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that play is very good because it it's not a kind of it's not a pro Palestinian play. 
particularly. I mean, it's not well, not in any way. It's a pro planet play. It's a play about looking after our world, which we all share. And I think it happens to have three amazing Palestinian kids acting in it. But I think if we can get those kind of things into schools, there's a lot of a lot of problems at the moment in the UK with discussing these kind of issues in, in UK schools. Um, but uh, not there shouldn't be in in just showing the creative work of Palestinian kids. That's my opinion. So that's what I think we can do. Yeah, it's a very nice play, and it is very, it's very, very watchable as well. It's so yeah. it's so much fun. The costumes that those girls are wearing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's just to show you this is the one that uh, that was being referred to here. Yeah. The last, just very importantly, I want to show you this slide here one more time. This is this is the call to action, and um, by the book, support the Hands Up Project, and uh, it is a great book. I think there's 70, 70 poems in it. I'm really looking forward to getting my copy. And uh, who would like to have the last word? Um, are you asking me, Jamie? I'm or just putting in the audience it there. Just <laughs> putting it out there, yes. I, I think it, you have to give the guest the last word always. I always think that's the the best way to go. It's, so I'm giving the onus is on you to wrap things up, Nick. Well, I had the last word last time, so I feel like I've already said my last word, which is just, yeah get get things out there and, and share what you can and um, yeah so let's just yeah let's and hopefully one day when this is all over we can help to support a link up between some kids if you teach young people um you know we could do a link up between the kids in your country and the kids in in gaza and you know we do lovely things like intercultural show and tell which is a nice a nice activity i think that's a great idea there will be some there must there has to be some sort of return to some sort of state of that we can call normal and then we'll start the work again and we'll all be there to help you nick yeah and to support the support the children and the teachers and and all the other volunteers and the hands up project of that i've been i've always been absolutely in awe of so thank you so much for joining us nick thank you for sharing these voices from gaza thank you for everybody that's been here i've tried to say hello to all you, all of you by name but there's a few people i've missed um john for example <laughs> and lambo i'm not sure if i saw you but yeah. thank you thank you so much yeah. Um, and we'll see you at the next yes. um, lesson stream live next week. We'll be doing something. I think I've got an idea for doing um, artificial generated images. As much as I'm scared of them, they could be quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jamie, for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And it's been, yeah, it's been great. Thank you, Nick. Take care now. And thank right. you very much, everybody. Yep. Bye. 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 Bye.